I mean, I, I think if you look at their whole offense, and it's a, it's a really explosive offense, um, but they've also been really balanced, which I think is, has made them um, play winning football this year. They play very complimentary football, um, I think similar to our own team. So they got a really, really big, powerful, physical offensive line that they can lean on. Um, they got, you know, three different backs that all do different things, three different tight ends that all do different things, plethora of – they got a track team at wide receiver. Um, lots of speed, and so, uh, you know, they really have talent all over the field. They have matchup issues all over the field. Um, but I feel really good about our guys and uh, look forward to the challenge of all those players. you feel like this will be the best offense you've played this year? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I do. Uh, I think they're, when you combine their offensive line, their quarterback's ability to make plays, the speed they have at receiver, their ability to run the ball, um, you know, the extra time to prepare, I think when you take in, in all that, and they're in the final four for a reason, you know, they're in the top four. Um, so it's a great challenge and, um, you know, one that, one that we really respect how they play and how they operate and one that we really look forward to the challenge. Jesse, in the last month or so, Isaiah Bond has kind of stood out as their go-to guy as a receiver. Um, what have you seen from him on film that think might give your secondary some fits? I think his speed, you know, he, they, they run routes with him that allow him to hit like top end speed and take the top off at times, get him the ball in space at times. Um, so I, I think just his speed and his ability to make plays after the catch, he's a, he, I think he's really good with the ball in his hands. Uh, there's not a lot of guys out there that run the track times that he's run. So the speed is legit. Uh, the playmaking ability has been real. He's become a really good, um, you know, I think he's developed really strong chemistry with, with Milrow. And um, playing really well is going to be a tough challenge for us. What can you carry from trying to defend Lamar and practice more to try to defend you? Yeah, I do think there are similarities there. And, there are, and it's really their ability to uh, make the play after the play. You know, the second play in football is, is, what, is what really makes the elite quarterbacks really good. Um, I mean, e even the guys that, like, are, aren't perceived as – Great athletes over the years. Aaron Rodgers was always like elite play after the play. Uh, Lamar, even even Brady back in the day, like the ability to stay alive and then still throw the ball downfield. And then what these what these guys do different is now the ability to stay alive, throw the ball downfield, and take off and run and, and be a running back once they have the ball in their hands or be a receiver. I mean, with their speed. Um, so there's certainly things that that uh, you know we always tried in practice or or maybe watched other teams try to defend Lamar. Um, so there's certainly, you know, a little bit of experience in that and studying film and talking to different people. Uh, but but he, I think he's his own player. He's played at a really high level. Um, he, you know, he's a different type of runner. He can run, like he runs with power as well. And, and he really runs like a 225 pound tailback once he's in the open field. And uh, I think the key is that that's how you have to try to tackle him. You can't you know, you can't leave your feet. You can't go for the. You can't try to push him out of bounds. Like you have to tackle him as if he's Derrick Henry running the football. Jesse, this is your second playoff. Obviously, is there anything you learned from last year and changed going into this year in terms of install or just? You know, I think uh, coaches. You know, it's kind of been alluded to the changes that we've made just in preparation. Um, but I think, I think personally, yeah, you you certainly learn. I think anytime you lose, you learn, and uh, you try to look back of, of why. Um, you try to look back, maybe why you didn't execute at the level, why you didn't play with the fundamentals at the level. Uh, so it, it really, you know, the experience of that really dictated our entire philosophy going into this year with the emphasis on certain things for us. 
um, and, and it's, you know, it's paid off so far and, and really talking about it at this point is, is what it is. We're ready. To, we're excited to get out there on Monday and see if it, see if it, uh, you know, see if it was worth it, you know, so. What did you talk about facing, kind of touched on him facing the role and the dangers that he has in this league? Yeah, I mean, he's a elite player, elite athlete, uh, like I said, capable of making those second play. Um, and then they also design runs for him. So there's times where, you know, there's times where offensive football is really like 10 on 11 when the quarterback is under center and he hands the ball off. He's really not a factor. But what they play, they make you play 11 on 11 with how they use him his ability to run the football, uh, and then, like I said, his ability to make huge plays in the passing game. Like, that, that is, I mean, his deep ball accuracy, his ability to throw the ball downfield, the plays that, that uh, Coach Reese and those guys have schemed up for him really complement how he plays. So it's a very well-constructed, well-designed offense for his skill set. And uh, certainly over the last, I mean, seven, eight games, I mean, he's played at a really, really high level. So. Yeah, the, you know, like all of our receivers have, have done a great job. Um, you know, Iman Dennis is one guy that really sticks out because he has some really top-end speed. Uh, so his ability to kind of kind of run some of those routes that, that take the top off the defense has been good. He's done a great job of, of giving us those type of looks. Alex, um, you know, Alex in his own right is a really good athlete, really good football player. I think he has a chance to be a really good quarterback here down the road. Um, and so he's certainly done a great job of trying to give us the best look of Milrow. I mean, Milrow's a guy that has played a whole season, been in the top ten in the Heisman. So to compare a guy that, that has only played a few snaps this year to him is really unfair. But, uh, you know, his skill set is, is our best look at trying to, trying to be prepared for, for Jalen. So uh, Alex has done a great job giving us a good look. Just that Alabama offensive line struggled earlier in the year, probably half time of the Ole Miss game, they kind of flipped the switch, especially Caden Proctor at left tackle kind of adjusted. What have you seen in your study? Um, and is there anything you can do to try to exploit a, a freshman left tackle in this game? Yeah, I mean, I think like any freshman playing for the first time, it, it you know might take a few weeks to get to get fully up to speed. Um, it's a guy that a year ago was playing high school football, so uh, he's massive. Uh, he moves pretty well for his size. Uh, they've done a good job, I think, at times giving him help uh, on certain rushers throughout the last six, seven games. I think they've given him a little bit more of the chip protection and stuff like that. But uh, he's a really good player in his own right. He's, he's been able to block people one-on-one. -on -one. He's super powerful in the run game. He can knock people off the ball. Um, so great challenge for us. And, uh, you know, we look forward to our guys having opportunities against their offensive line. You know, they're really good. I think our players are really good. I trust all of our guys that play up front. And uh, I can't wait to see them go out there and compete against that, that really good offensive line. Yeah, number one, they love football. And uh, this day and age in recruiting, that's, I think that's tougher than maybe 10 years ago, you know, where there's so many factors. Um, but they, they love football. They put in the time. They put in the work. They trust the process. Um, they have a skill set. Uh, maybe there was some area that they were deficient in high school. You know, Rod probably was 165 pounds, 170 pounds. Uh, Mike B was like an undersized athletic quarterback, running back, linebacker, DB. So guys that are versatile, play a lot of different positions. Uh, when, you, when you're able to do that in high school, you show some sense of football intelligence. Uh, you show the ability to play in the open field, which football is now. So even when you're playing quarterback, you're playing running back, a lot of times that skill set translates to playing in space on defense, playing linebacker, playing safety. Um, so those guys just, like I said, you know, uh, other teams probably look back now and wish they would have recruited them, you know. And so it's a credit to those guys. It's a credit to Coach Herb, Coach Harbaugh, kind of the development process that we have at Michigan. And, uh, and, and, and then in their own right, those guys have, have developed themselves into great players through a lot of hard work. Jesse, how hard is it to suss that out in the recruiting process on guys who truly really love the game, given all the other kind of factors going on these days? Uh, it's just research, you know. It's trying to, trying to talk to as many people as possible, um, trying to figure out, what makes them tick, uh, you know, trying to make sure that, like, football is the, 
you know, I think when you choose a college, it's a lifelong decision. And I think that's been lost a little bit in the process. So some people are looking for certain things or some people it's like a, the quickest football deal. But at the end of the day, like that's where you're going to get your degree from. That's that's a place that hopefully is going to set you up for long term success in life, regardless of football. So um, it's definitely become harder. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think if you have a process and you trust your process and you ask the right questions and you try to talk to the right people, um, you can certainly try to have a higher percentage than maybe some people based on, you know, trusting your own process and trying to figure all that stuff out. You guys had some transfers that made an impact this year, but like to find, like you just mentioned, the, the character traits and the things like that that fit for your program, is it a different process than it would be for just like the normal recruiting process for a high school kid? I don't think it's that different. I mean, I think like anybody you bring into the program at Michigan, they better love football, number one. Like they better love football. They better love the process of trying to become better at football. Um, that's really what we hang our hats on. And so, you know, asking those questions, trying to figure it out, regardless if it's a grad transfer or, or a freshman, I think, um, you know, you want the same traits. Uh, you certainly want the maybe the older guy you know, to have figured it out a little bit and kind of know what you're going to get. And, you know, maybe a one-year player, maybe a two-year player. Uh, with a young guy, certainly there's more room for, hey, he has more room for development, more room for growth. Um, but I think the process of trying to figure out if they're a good fit is very similar for the young guys and the older guys. Jesse, what is this last couple of weeks process like for you as coaches? So transfer portal opens up, early signing period, holidays, and then, you know, trying to prepare for this actual game. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's really interesting. I mean, the the um, you know the college football calendar is is kind of become a little chaotic. Uh, where you know you have the regular season going on, you have you know coaching changes starting to take place. You have guys going in the portal before the season's even over. You have teams that are you know you have four teams that are playing in meaningful games, and the rest of them have honestly become like exhibition games where so many players opt out and. Uh, or go into the portal. So it's, um, it's interesting. I, I do think the expanded playoff will help in that regard, just sort of, um, you know, hopefully keep, keep the, the good teams together and let these teams finish out their seasons the right way. Um, but for us, like, you know what, it's kind of like whatever they tell you the calendar is, whatever they tell you the, the rules are, that's what you got to try to maximize. And so that's what we've tried to do since the Big Ten Championship game is uh, maximize our windows in recruiting maximize our windows and trying to uh, see what's in the portal that we might be interested in, and then certainly maximizing our time and preparation for a great Alabama team. Jesse, you, you and your dad have worked together hand in hand in, in both sorts of ways for many years at, at many stops, mm -hmm. but maybe never quite this close and maybe never quite on this level. Can you just talk about uh, and needing him to with the help of linebackers yeah. and Milrow and all that? Can you just, what has that process been like? What's been the most helpful maybe as a special moment that's happened? You know, it's um, – it's the person I probably trust the most in football um, that I know has, you know, seen everything. I've uh, been coaching, you know, 40, like 44, 45 years. Uh, and so, you know, a guy that, like, you trust, you know, number one, that he has, I know for a fact that whatever he brings up, whatever he says is my best interest, which, you know, you hope that at times, but that's not always true when you have a group of people that, Maybe you just have known for a year or two, you know, so um, nobody has our interest more at heart than him. And then uh, nobody has the experience of seeing so many different things over his career from so many different angles, from so many different positions. Um, position coach, coordinator, head coach, uh, kind of seen all the different scenarios. Um, and so, you know, to be here at this moment in the college football playoff, playing in a semifinal game, uh, it's certainly special to be able to share that. Uh, as he, you know, probably winds down on his career. Um, so for my kids to be able to have, have him around, for me to have, be able to have him around is, uh, you know, it's, it's really special. And it's, yeah, definitely like a lifelong memory we'll always have. Jesse, we talked to their linebackers in the room. They said what makes this unit special is the trust they have, not just the starters, but the guys in reserve too. How do you facilitate that level of trust and watch that grow throughout the season? You know, I think like I think you're honest and you keep it real with the players. And so when we go through, you know, spring ball and training camp and we're trying to build, you know, we kind of build a list of guys that, 
hey, if we played a game this week, like you would be on the list that, that would get snaps. And, some, and, you know, during spring and fall, it, it's ever changing because um, there's, there's a difference in guys that have played and kind of built up some equity and have played in big games. And then there's guys that are trying to work their way up to that level that haven't done it yet. And so I think for us, um, what I tell all the players that we recruit, what I tell all the players on our defense, is if you're ready to play and help us play winning football, you will play. Um, right now, that list is about 25 guys, which is fantastic. That's, that's a high number in college football. There's so many defenses you turn on and they play the same 13 players the whole game or 14 players. So I think it keeps morale high. Um, I think the guys care about each other. They, they know that they can go out there and play really hard and that the next guy's gonna come in and go in and do the same thing. Um, and so, so much credit to the players for their willingness to, you know, sometimes you gotta put your, hey, I wanna play 60 plays and get four sacks this game, put that aside, play 30 plays, play really hard, get my production, and uh, know that the other guy's gonna come in and do the same thing. And a lot of times, two or three guys playing that amount of snaps regardless of how good that top player is, is still better than one player playing that, at, you know, not being able to sustain that level for that amount of snaps. So um, it's kind of what we hang our hat on and, and uh, it's a special group to be a part of and they, they really love each other, they care about each other. And um, yeah, it's been fun to see that grow the last couple of years. Yeah, so you say the game an update yesterday that Jason McClellan is trending in the right direction to play. From what you've seen on film, what does he do of those three backs that play that, that might give you guys some challenges? Yeah, he's big, physical. He's, he runs downhill. He's got great speed. He's got the ability to take a play to the house. Um, but he certainly runs behind his pads like all their backs do. So, um, you know, if he's out there, he's a great challenge and somebody we got to be aware of and know where he's at. Um, but, we'll, we'll, you know, hopefully we'll be prepared for any, any back that they throw out there. Yeah, I think on the D-line, especially, um, you know, when you're playing a, a three-down or a four-down front, you know, when you play against an O-line, for example, like Alabama, where their tackles are 6'7", 360, their guards are 340, 350 pounds, um, you got to have size and you got to have guys that are big and can move um, that, you know, the Kenneth Grant, the Mason Grahams, Chris Jenkins, who's kind of made himself into that. Um, and so, yeah, I think that philosophy of big people, um, beat up little people, and that's like that's sort of that's sort of really like the thought process of up front. Uh, you know, I think everywhere else you want speed and athleticism and guys that are capable of doing the jobs you're asking them to do. Secondary players, linebacker players, but up front there's certainly a, a size requirement to be able to hold up and play the style of front and the style of football that we want to play. Yeah, certainly. I, I think what's, you know, I think the defensive line is one of the areas that's transitioned, transformed at Michigan over the last three years. Um, you know, first round D linemen, D tackles, uh, edge guys that are bigger, stronger, physical, can hold the edge. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's been an emphasis. Um, it's kind of how we built it with the Ravens. And that really, you know, that's really all tied back to the uh, Cleveland Browns Belichick. So it's really, like the Ravens, Ozzie Newsome, you know, sort of the way you construct the defense. Yeah, I think it's all probably all goes back to the origin of the same deal that that the Saban, Belichick, Parcells um, tree. So um, I think it's you get the biggest, strongest, fastest guys you can up front, and uh, then try to supplement the rest of the defense with guys that can do the things you want them to do. Jesse, who are some young guys? We are now going to be switching the players and coach in bowl practices that maybe uh, have stood out the coach to grab you. Okay. Here, All right. Quick, if you don't mind. Sure. We're gonna take the mic off you first. Okay. Sorry. Um, you know, uh, yeah. no, I'll grab you. All right. Thank you so much. Yep.